Hey, this is Brian. Thanks so much for watching Keys Motorsports. If you like our videos, give us a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe and check us out at keysmotorsports.com. Today, we're going to show you how to install Pure Stage 2 turbos on this F80 M3. In today's video, we will be showing you how to do it on a lift. Now, if you don't have a lift, don't worry. We've actually done an N55 X-Drive turbo upgrade, which is a little bit more difficult than this one, on our backs on the ground. So if you have a quick jack or even some jack stands, this is very possible for you as well. Let's get started by removing the negative terminal of the battery. So what you want to do is just rock this out and then just carefully remove the negative terminal. Pull it off and then set it to the side. Now with your battery disconnected, you never want your trunk to shut. So what we do is we put a microfiber towel here so in case anybody walks by and accidentally tries to shut the trunk, they won't be able to because if they did, it would lock us out. With the battery disconnected, now we can lift the hood up, get you some light so you can see what's going on. As you can see, we've already refreshed the cooling system. We have a CSF charge air cooler, the front mount heat exchanger, and also the DCT cooler. Let's begin by removing this carbon strut brace. So to do this, you're going to need a trim tool. And on either side, there's going to be one of these little rivets. What you do is you pop the center out, just like that. And the other piece should follow easy. Then take a 10 millimeter and turn these three plastic nuts counterclockwise just 90 degrees. And then once you've done that, this entire piece will slide off. So do the exact same thing to the other side. Next, what we need to do is we need to remove the rivet down here. A little bit difficult to see. Pull that out like that. And what that's going to do is it's going to enable us to take this completely off the strut brace. Now we need to remove all of the 13 millimeter bolts that hold the carbon strut brace in place. What I like to do is use a ratchet and break them loose. And then what you can do is you can put your socket on a drill to make it a little bit faster. Once you've removed all the 13 millimeters, there's one more 10 right there. Remove that. Once you've done that, you want to have a safe spot lined up for this. So as you can see, we have a a padded bumper rack over here. We'll just very carefully set that on there. Then what we'll do is we'll remove the motor cover, just gently pull up, and it's held in by these little plastic grommets here. They just clip on to these little nubs of plastic. Now what we need to do is take our mass airflow sensor. You're gonna press in on this little tab, and that'll pull off just like that. We'll just put it there to keep it out of the way. Then take a six millimeter, you just very carefully undo this hose clamp. And then once that is nice and loose, we can pull this off. And then you'll be able to pull this entire air box straight out, just like that. And it's caught on these little grommets down here. And there's another hose clamp under here. Very carefully remove this. And then once that is loose, you can take this top piece and just very carefully wiggle it off. Now what we can do is take your six millimeter again while you have it out, and let's release the charge pipe. So get these clamps nice and loose, but don't take it all the way out. And you can move this cord out of the way. Just very carefully slide these off. Just like that. Next, you're going to need an E10. It's an E Torx. We're going to remove the other end of the charge pipe. Pull it out just like that. Now, what I would recommend doing and what we do is we typically lay down some painter's tape and then we put the bolts in front of it so we know what goes where. nothing gets lost. Then while we're here, and while we have the tool out, we're gonna take our E10, and we're going to release the turbo side of the other charge pipe. Okay, and then carefully pull that out. 
but we're gonna put it where we labeled it. Then just take your charge pipe, start with the outer one, lift it straight up, just like that. What I like to do is I like to take a brand new microfiber towel and just stick it in the charge air cooler so nothing ends up in there. And we're going to do the exact same thing to this one. This one is a little bit more tricky um, because your space is really, really tight. So just be very careful. Continue to lift it up. Get the rubber on the other side of that. There we go. Move that out of the way. Then as you'd expect, we'll stuff a brand new talon here so nothing gets in there. Now take your 10 millimeter. We're going to remove this bolt right here. And then this inlet is actually not held in by anything else. It's just held in by a little O-ring. Just take it, wiggle it a couple times. It'll pull out just like that. The next thing we need to do is we need to unclip these O2 sensors. So there are two of them. And the way that these work, there you have the gray plug. You snap it out. And then I like to just lift over here. And then it'll disconnect just like that. So do the same thing to this one here. It's kind of hard to reach, but you'll be able to get it. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we are going to remove the connections to the wastegate. So the best way to do this is to just take a pick tool and lift up and then that'll press right off. So just to show you what I did here, you could either press on this little tab or you could just take a pick tool and lift the front of this up. It's gonna do the exact same thing. Because of how tight this is, I just like to use a really long pick tool like this, lift it up, and then you can actually just push the whole thing off safely. Same thing with this one. We'll just lift it up and then just very carefully slide it off. Now we're going to start removing this other inlet here. So there's a 10 millimeter. Down here I have this little DeWalt 90 degree tool. Just very carefully remove this. Slide it out, just like that. Make sure you don't drop it in the turbo. Then there's a tiny little clip under here, so same thing. I like to just lift that up and then just gently guide the connection off. Next, we're going to remove that screw right there. Now take a T25 and remove this torque screw. And with all of that done, just gonna wiggle this out very carefully. We'll just set it up here out of the way. And then we can continue to work on our inlet. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the rest of the intake, which is pretty much a lot like repeating the other side. So we'll remove our sensor here. Then over here, you just press on the rigid sides of this connection and then that'll pop off just like that. Over here, you just pinch these two together and then that'll pop off and take your six millimeter and loosen the hose clamp. Remove our coolant line from here. Then what we're able to do, is go over by the air box, just carefully lift this up. Just like that. And this whole thing will come free. Then I would highly recommend a ratcheting open-ended wrench like this one. And there is a 10 millimeter, it's kind of by feel. All right, there it is there. And just gently loosen that nut. And once it's loose, <laughs> it's a little tight. <laughs> Get your hand in here. and remove that nut. And if you can get that out without dropping it, you can do anything. Now this is impossible to see, but there's another 10 millimeter on the bottom. So just very carefully remove this one. 
So on the first inlet, we can see that the only seal is really an O-ring. But on the other turbo, we had the top nut that we removed and then also the bottom one. So for whatever reason, this is held on by two nuts and bolts and the other one is more just a slip fitting. Once you've done all that, you just pull your inlet out. So just be very careful. It's gonna pull out just like that. Now at this point, we've done just about everything we can at the top, so we're gonna have to go underneath. Before we do that, we are going to need to support the motor. So this is a tow hook. It's actually from, I believe, an E46. And what you do is you just thread it into the motor just like that. Then you wanna take your motor support and get everything set up. All right, so then what we're going to do is we're gonna set up our hoist. I typically like to go through the tow hook twice with the chain. Um, once will probably do just fine, but I like to be extra safe when we're doing this. Put the remainder of the chain there and we'll start to snug this up. We need to remove motor mounts before we can actually lift it. So I'm just gonna get it to where it's holding some tension. And then once we remove the motor mounts, we're only, we're only going to lift it about 25 millimeters or so. So it's not very much, which is nice. At this point, we have a little bit of tension, so we're ready to go underneath the car. Before we do that, we're going to just loosen our oil cap and just gently lay it on top. And then over the coolant reservoir tank, we're going to do the exact same thing. We're just gonna loosen it and set it on top. And that's because we're going to drain the oil out of the car and also the coolant. Now what we're going to do is we're going to remove some of the underbody plastics. Now we just got done filming a video where we replaced the DCT cooler and whatnot, so everything is not fully on in full disclosure. Um, but what I, what I like to do is I like to start with an eight millimeter. We're gonna remove this front piece here. There's basically just a couple eight millimeters in the front, and then we just have a couple in the front. You can see that one was in nice and secure. So we just wanted to show you roughly what's going to be happening. And then while you have your eight millimeter out, remove all the ones along the perimeter of the stiffening plate. There's only a thousand, so. Then what you need to do is take a 16 millimeter, and we're going to remove all these bolts that hold the stiffening plate in. Now what I like to do is I like to loosen them by hand and then I like to put them on my drill and speed things up a little bit. Okay. And watch your eyes with this part. Now you're going to need a 17 millimeter. We're going to loosen the oil plug here. Have your container ready to catch it off. And always make sure that the gasket comes off too. When I pulled that out, the gasket fell down, but you always wanna make sure that you never have two gaskets on. And we're gonna replace it with a new gasket when we reinstall this in a bit. Now what we're going to do is we're going to drain the coolant. So what you need to do is you need to just get under this clip right here and just very carefully maneuver it down just like that. And then this is what it's going to look like and it's going to snap in place. Now what we're going to do is we're gonna get the camera out of the way. And I'm going to release the coolant and try to not get too wet. So then just reach your hand up here. And then just gently guide that off. Now what we're going to do, since this is down to a very slow drip, we're going to replace the crush washer between drips here, I'm gonna thread this back in. Just so we don't forget, we're gonna take care of torquing it down to 20 Newton meters. So I have my Eastwood digital torque wrench here. Good. All right, once this is done draining, you can take that connection, and just clip it back on. 
Now it's very important that you hear an audible click. Always make sure that that clip is fully engaged. So let's listen for the click. All right, so once you hear that click, you know that it is fully engaged. Now there's another one that I want to get colon out of, and that one is right up here. So same thing, let's grab our pick tool. All right, so here's the other one. So same thing. We'll get our, our pick tool in there, and then we'll release the clip like that. So once that clip is released, we're just going to use one of these moldable funnels just to try to contain our mess. I'm going to reach my hand up, and then we're just going to wiggle this coolant line off. There we go. As you can see, the funnel does a, a pretty good job. Just remember, the more coolant you can get out now, the less it's going to splash you when you're actually doing the job. Now what we need to do is we need to get this connection up here, and we need to loosen it. Try to not block your angle here. All right, and there we go. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to unclip this from the top. Now the trick to these is just to get them as straight as you can. There we go. All right, cool. Nothing came out, so we're good there. Now what we need to do is we need to remove the downpipe, so let's remove the O2 sensors. You can either just unthread them, or what I like to do is I like to just take off the entire sensor because it makes it a little bit easier. So one is over here, and the other one you just follow it over is over here. So just remove it from its mounting location. And you just open the gray thing, and then there's a little tab under here. Again, if it gives you trouble, all you need to do is just lift the tab up, and then once you get a good grip, you'll be able to slide it right off. We'll take these wires, and we'll set them over here. Um, one thing to note is they're color coordinated, so you can't mess them up, which makes it really nice. All right, now what we're going to do we're going to loosen these bolts. Always make sure you have an open-ended wrench on the back. Now in this car, this is a 13 and these are 11s. And what we're going to do, the pry bar, is we're going to separate this little plate. about through. All right, good. And then we can separate these, but before I do that, we're gonna just release this exhaust hanger to just be able to push this exhaust a little bit further back. So to do this, we have a cool little exhaust hanger removal tool, which forces the middle in. It enables you to get it off a heck of a lot easier. Then what you want to do is release your O2 sensor from this clip, and it'll look just like that. Then do the same thing on the other one. It's a little bit hard to get to, so what I would do is get a, a pry tool and just pop it off the back. Okay, all right, we're all free. Now let's remove the top V-band clamp on these down pipes and pull them out. Let's now remove the V-band clamps. So these are a 13 millimeter. And with this one, you can go from the front pretty easily with a swivel and a couple extensions. With V-band clamps, pull the bolt all the way out. The nut is actually welded into the other end of the clamp. Um, then what you can do is take a pry bar and you want to stick the tip of it there in between the clamp. And then if you just hit it with your hand, it'll loosen it. So once I pull this off, I'll show you exactly what I just did. All right, so what happens is your V-band clamp is clamped like this, and sometimes you get corrosion and whatnot in there. So you get the bolt out, 
but it's still stuck. So what you do is you take this and you stick it in there and then you pop it out. And then a lot of times what'll happen is this side will still be stuck. So you just grab your hand and pop it off, open it, and then you can rotate it out. So that's the trick. Now do the exact same thing with your other V-band. The cool thing about the V-bands is they're typically pretty easy to spin. Um, you might have some corrosion or whatever on yours, but they normally all pretty good. Right, do the same thing. Now this one, I just twisted because it's a different angle. And I'll try to pull off the other side. That's tight. There it goes. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide the gasket off the end here so I can separate my down pipes. There we go. Reach up and grab my V-band. Doesn't hit me in the face. I'm gonna take this down pipe out. Carefully set it down. And we'll do the same to the other one. All right, now what we're going to do is we are going to remove the motor mount. So to do so, I'm gonna twist these E10s, loosen them up. Now take your 16 millimeter and we're going to remove the nut that actually connects the engine support arm to the motor mount. So we're just gonna carefully loosen this. It's a really tight fit, but once you get it loose, they normally come out pretty easy. Once that's loose, spin it off, looks just like that. I'm gonna go label this so I don't forget what it goes to. Then I'm going to remove this motor mount bolt over here. And then we're going to remove these E10s on the other side because if we start, what we need to do next, we need to lift the motor only about 25 millimeters or so, so it's not a lot but you don't want to have tension on one side and, and twist it. It's not good, so this will make sure that everything just lifts up nice and even. Now that the car's back on the ground, we can just very carefully twist this. And what this is going to do is it's going to just ever so slightly lift the motor. And again, since we have both motor mounts released, it's going to lift evenly. So the best way to do this is to pick a spot Get a tape measure, and then just ever so slightly start to lift it up until it's about 25 millimeters. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take an E14, now that the motor is lifted up just a little bit, and we're going to remove these E14 bolts to connect the support arm to the motor. Okay, so here's one. All right, then there's an awkward one in here. You can't really see it at all. You just have to go by feel. So once you get that lined up, remove this one. There it goes. Now before you remove this last bolt, you need to remove this little T30 that's holding the heat shield in, otherwise it's gonna snag it when it goes to pull it out. So at this time, let's remove that little T30. <clears throat> right. <clears throat> then once that's out, you can remove the support arm and also the motor mount. At this point, there's a T30 down here, and then there's another T30 up here, and then what we're going to do is we're gonna take those out, and then we're going to remove this lower heat shielding. Okay, and you can pull the heat shield out just like that. All right, now what we can start to do is we can start to remove our coolant lines. We're gonna just start with this one here. This is the one that's connected to that, the plastic fitting on the end. We need to remove this T30. 
And then what you need to do is reach up here and there's another T30. Okay. Now what we're going to do is just very slowly, very carefully wiggle this line out. And just be aware, there may be a little bit of coolant still in there, so if you get splashed, I warned you. <laughs> and then we have another line up here. Now, as you can see, this is super tight, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a quarter inch open-ended wrench here to help get me started. So just to show you what I did, this one was super tight, so I just put the bit in there, and then I got a quarter inch open-ended wrench here, and I just twisted it. And that was, yeah, I had a little bit more room than that, but it wasn't quite big enough to get my actual ratchet on, and this way worked great. All right, so now what we're gonna do, is we're going to just take that one that we just loosened, and we're going to wiggle this out as well. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to remove this oil line, so to do so, you guessed it, T30. And then we're going to remove the turbo side. Again, just T30s. And then once you do that, this is just gonna fall down. It's not really held in by anything. And you can remove the gasket. We are going to replace this. Now, when you're looking at this, it's gonna be probably too subtle to tell on camera. It bubbles up towards the turbo. So if you don't know if the indent goes up or down, remember it goes, it bubbles up to the turbo. So always remember that. And what you can do is just very carefully just wiggle this out. And just be careful because there may be some loose oil in it. So as you can see, we have a towel just to help prevent slipping. Now what we need to do is we need to remove this oil line right here. It's a T30, as you'd expect. And when you're reinstalling these screws, or bolts, we'll say, uh, the ones with washers go into the block. The ones that don't have washers, they go into the turbo. All right. And just very carefully. And just very carefully wiggle this out. And again, there may be a little bit of oil that comes out. Okay. Perfect. Now I'm about to block your view, but um, you need to get back here. And then again, this is just taking off that coolant line. So excuse my reach here. And then what we can do is we can wiggle this out of the way. Be very gentle. Okay. We can remove this entire line. All right, now while we're over here, we're going to remove this T30 right here. And as you'll notice, I've actually been using a little thumb driver. I, I used the ratchet to break the seal. And then after that, the little thumb driver just helps to pull everything out a little bit easier. All right, so there's that. Now what we're going to do while we're here we're just gonna wiggle that out very carefully, just like that. And there's one more T30 way over here that we need to remove before this entire thing can come out. Then, up here where my thumb is, there's one more T30 that we need to remove. It's super comfortable. <laughs> All right, we pulled out the T30. Gently wiggle it out. And then we're going to take this entire line. We're gonna pull it out and out of the way. Perfect. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to remove the other oil line, which is right here. So once again, we'll break it. I'm just gonna use my little thumb driver. Once again, I want you to remember the ones that have the washer are the ones that are going to go into the block. And what we can do, very carefully, 
pull that out. And there's two more T30s up here. So once again, once you remove this, there's going to be a little gasket. And now this gasket is facing down. So there's a little bump in it. This one is down. So the one on the front is down, and the one in the back is up. So always keep that in mind. All right, that's all we have to do down here. Let's lower the car, and then we'll work on removing those heat shields, and then take off the turbos. Okay, now what we're going to do is we are going to remove the heat shields. And then we'll be one step closer to removing the turbo. Now it's always a really good idea to put something in your turbo. You don't drop one of these screws in there, because that would be a bad day. And these are just two T30s. There's two over here, and then there's two back there. And we're going to remove the ones in the back here. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to remove the rear heat shield first. And then we'll remove the front one. They're in there pretty snug, so just keep working at it. You'll get it. So there's one. number two. At this time we are going to start unbolting the turbo so to do this you're going to need a 10 millimeter and it's going to be really hard to show so we're just gonna time lapse it for you but as you can see here are all the locations where we're going to be removing these 10 millimeter nuts. All right so we are on our last nut here. All right and then what we can do Carefully slide this off. Just be very careful as you navigate it out. Here we have our turbo. We can do the same thing with the one in the front. Just be careful of your lines and everything else. There's number two. This is what your stock compressor wheel looks like. And this is what is gonna make it so you can get about 700 horsepower. You have the right supporting mods. Now let's flip it over and look at the turbine difference. So as you can see, it's quite tiny. And on the Pure, it is quite awesome. Uh, they do a heck of a job making these turbos and you can see where the power is coming from. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to start by moving over the wastegate. So there are four tiny Allen bolts. Look just like that. So we're going to remove these. And what you can do, just take this, and what you, you kind of push it up and then off. And then this entire piece will come off. You put it on the new one like that. We'll put the pin back in so it doesn't slide around. And we'll put these back in. And then what you want to do is you want to put a new gasket in here. So we have that one set nice. Looks like everything's sitting nice and flat. And then what we're going to do is we're going to remove the oil line from this one and we're going to put it on our new Pure Turbo. Now, when you are doing this, these lines are gonna get torqued down to eight Newton meters. Now what we wanna do is we wanna take these old seals off and we have some brand new ones that we're going to be installing. So just carefully take these off with a pick tool. We'll set them to the side. And then I have some brand new ones we're gonna to install to make sure that everything is sealed up perfectly, especially since you have it this far apart. You don't wanna skimp out on things like O-rings. Okay, perfect. So now what we're going to do, so we're gonna flip this over, just like the other one was. 
We're gonna put this in here like this. Then we're gonna take our T30. We're gonna put it back in there. And like I was saying, we're going to torque this down to eight Newton meters. So you're going to need a very tiny torque wrench. Okay, same exact thing over here. Going to remove the wastegate. Okay, now we're going to take our T30 again and we're gonna swap this oil line over. Same thing over here, we're gonna take our new O-rings and we're going to install those. Perfect, check that out. Now we're going to get our new turbo. We'll flip it over. Install it like this. And then same thing, it's gonna get torqued down to eight Newton meters. At this time, we are ready to install our turbos, but before doing that, always replace your gasket. Now, BMW is pretty smart when they design this because it's going to go this way for one of the turbos, and then you're gonna get a second one, and all you really do is flip it, and it's going to fit perfect. Now, talking about securing the turbos, there's a proper tightening sequence. So here's what we're going to do. So the turbo that's going to be in the front, which is cylinders one through three, is going to get tightened like this. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to put the centering nut on, which is number one, and you're going to tighten that down to 12 Newton meters. Then you're gonna go two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, all to 12 Newton meters. Then what you're going to do is you're gonna tighten everything to 18. Um, and when I say everything, I mean two through 10. You're not gonna tighten number one again. So you're gonna go all of these to 18. Then what you're going to do is you're going to turn the center nut, which is number one, 90 degrees of rotation, and you're done. Then what we're going to do is we're going to do the other turbo, we're going to do the same thing. You're going to get your center nut, which is number one, secure to 12 Newton meters. That's gonna hold everything in place. Then do two through nine. This one only has nine. The other one has 10. Um, you're going to do everything to 12, then everything to 18. Take number one, turn it 90 degrees, call it a day. Now, before we start to install the turbos, I removed other oil and coolant lines. So what I'm doing now is I am replacing every single O-ring with a brand new one. I'm gonna grab our gasket and also our turbo. Start by putting the gasket on. And then very carefully maneuver our turbo up there. Get that 11 millimeter. I forgot to mention it earlier in the video, but the centering nut, for whatever reason, is 11 millimeters. The rest are 10. All right, cool. We got our center. That's gonna hold everything in place. At this point, we have the center nut. We have it torqued down to 12 Newton meters. We're going to do the rest of the nuts in the order that we talked about earlier everything to 12, and then once we're done that, we're gonna go everything to 18, and then we're gonna take that nut that we just did, and we're gonna turn it 90 degrees of rotation. Um, so we're going to do that in, while it's wide open, and then we're going to install the other one, then put everything back together, and we're done. Now what's going to happen is Zach is going to work from the top, I'm going to work from the bottom, and we are going to follow the torque pattern. 
Um, sometimes when you have two people, if you have someone working from below and someone working from above, you just hand the torque wrench back and forth and it goes by a lot faster. So let's get started. All right, so now what we're going to do while I'm down here, Zach is going to hand me this turbo. Thank you. I'm gonna slide back under it. We're gonna do the exact same thing to this one. At this point, both turbos are fully secured and properly torqued down. Now all we need to do is put those oil and coolant lines down. Now what we're going to do is we're gonna take all those little T30s and we're gonna to torque them down to eight Newton meters. So at this time, we're gonna take care of that. All right, so we have our oil lines in. We just press them back in. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take our T30s, we're gonna thread these back in and then we'll torque them down to eight Newton meters. Okay. At this point in the process, the turbos are fully installed and properly torqued down. We reinstalled the downpipe and the exhaust. We're starting now to work on the charge pipes, the intake, and the carbon brace. We're just gonna time lapse some of this. All you need to do is reinstall it in the reverse order that it was removed. Okay, at this point, everything is fully installed, torqued down, car has oil, car has coolant in both reservoirs. Now what we need to do is we need to fulfill the bleed process on the F80. So to do this, what we're going to do is we have a battery charger hooked up. We're going to get in the car, we're gonna turn the lights on. We're going to turn the heat all the way up to as high as it'll go. Then we put the fan speed on the lowest setting that it will go. Hold the gas for about 10 seconds and then you're going to kick on the bleed process, which is going to run the electronic pump and bleed the system for you. Now, once you've done that, you need to check your levels, make sure everything is good, and there's a really good chance you might have to do this two times and possibly even three times. So you always wanna make sure that you take your time, do this right, make sure you set all of the levels correctly because you don't want your motor to overheat because it has air in the line. At this point of the process, we are just completing the coolant bleed. And then after that, we're gonna check it again. Now, if you do need to do a second bleed, always remember you need to reset the DME. And to do that, all you need to do is remove the negative battery terminal for about five to 10 minutes or so, and that'll reset everything. And then you'll be able to run the process again. So once we're done that, we'll do a test drive, check everything for leaks, just double check everything. We'll be good to go. Once again, my name is Brian. Thank you so much for watching Keys Motorsports. If you are interested in pure turbos for your BMW, be sure to check us out at keysmotorsports.com. If you like today's video, give us a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe and check us out at keysmotorsports.com for all your BMW retrofit, performance, and aesthetic needs. Once again, my name is Brian. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.